Welcome back to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. I'm Instructor Victor Campos. So last lesson we looked at some very basic uh, HTML code. I'm going to get back into Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to launch the software and in this case it remembered the last thing that I did. Very good and uh, recall that I view my code and edit my code in Visual Studio Code here and then I go to the folder and double click to view the result in the web browser. So I've got my code and I've got my result. Alright so we wrote some HTML, some basic HTML, this is what we've got so far. Looks okay, pretty plain and boring. Well this is where the second pillar of our code comes into play. HTML is basically the structure of our document. It's the known as also the content layer of our project. It's all about displaying our content and setting up the structure of our project. The second layer is our presentation layer which is CSS to define colors and so forth. Styling the presentation of the document. CSS is cascading style sheets. We'll do a quick intro to CSS at this point. So right now my document has some inherent style. White background, black text. I can change that via CSS. I'm going to leave alone my content and now go to the style layer, the style code. There are several ways to write this, but here's one way that will do it. I'm going to back up into the head block of my code. The block ends on line 6. I will give myself a brand new blank line above line 6, so I'll go back to line 5 and press enter at the end there to give myself some new space. And I will write the style tag, which has a pair as most of our tags do and anything that appears within this pair is related to styling our document. So we saw that we had a plain white background in our page. I want to change that so I'm gonna write body. Now this body that I'm writing here is related to the body tag I've written over here so I'm gonna redefine the basic look the inherent look of the body tag, which is a white background. So in style, I will write body, and notice the way I, I write it there, I don't write the angle brackets. Instead, what I'll write is space curly brace. Visual Studio Code will open and close the curly braces for me. The curly braces are next to the P on your keyboard. There's a P there's a backslash, there's a plus symbol around that area above the the quotes you should see let me back up here you should see that there is a left square bracket and a right square bracket on your keyboard and if you hold shift you'll get the left curly bracket and shift right curly bracket brackets, braces. I think there's a specific reason for their different names, but I think I usually call them brackets, square brackets, curly brackets. So I'm going to write the curly brackets, open and close. Between the curly brackets, then I'll write background dash color. Body is the selector. I'm selecting the body tag. The property that I'm controlling or editing or changing is the background color. Notice how it's written, background dash color. Notice that it's lowercase. Notice that all my code is lowercase. That's the standard for HTML5. So I'm changing the background color property of the body selector. Colon, I'll say pink, semicolon. Very important here, we have a colon right after the property, and then we have pink, the value, and then semicolon. That's like the end of the statement. 
Let's see what this looks like, and then we'll further explain. So I'll save my work. I'll go back to the web browser, reload, pink background. Maybe we want a different color. So what if we do blue? So I changed pink to blue. Save it. Run it. Or uh, reload it. I get blue. We have a variety of colors built in, known by their name. We can go look these up, actually. If you do a search for CSS color names, you'll get a bunch of results. One of the places you could go to is w3schools.com. This has a list of HTML slash CSS color names. And they're listed here. So we have colors like brown, coral, gold, green, yellow, etc. Let's say I'm going to do indigo. So I'll go back to my body selector, my body CSS code, the property background color, and change its value of indigo. Save. Reload. Indigo. Looks like purple to me, but that's indigo. And we can define these colors in a variety of other ways, which we'll talk about later. But notice now the text is a little hard to read. A dark background and dark text is a little hard to read. There's no good contrast. So I would like to change the text color. And we can do that in CSS in this style block. The default of the body tag is white background, black text. I just changed the background color, though. So I can also change the text color. I'll go back to my curly brackets here. And I've got one property and value pair, background color, indigo, semicolon. Now we'll see that spaces and tabs and such are pretty optional when we're writing most HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But just so that it looks a little more readable, I'll add a space after that semicolon and add another property and value pair. So if we've got background color, what if we have text-color, and then we could change its color to white? That would make sense. That would make too much sense, because unfortunately, when they were developing the CSS standard, no one had the good idea to call it text color. It's simply defined as color. The color property deals with text color. So we just have to memorize. Color means text color. Same syntax, which means we write the property, colon, value, semicolon. So I'll say color, white. That's the value. Semicolon, because I'm finished with that. I'll highlight it here to show you. Property, colon, value, semicolon. And we can have a list of as many as we want. We had these. And we can have multiple ones. But I'll save this. I'll open the browser and reload it. Now I've got white text, indigo background. We have about 200 CSS codes that we can use to further define the look of our document. We'll look at one more. Body, in this case, this selector, this CSS selector, edited the look of the body tag. Well, CSS can redefine the look of just about any HTML tag. So I want to redefine the look of my H1 tag. I'm going to back up to my style block and add a new line. And I'll start writing H1. I'm going to select the H1 tag to style it, space, curly brackets. This time, just to show you that we can do this, 
I'm going to break the curly braces into two separate lines. I pressed enter on the keyboard. And this, broken into multiple lines, is the same as line 7, which was one line. Here I'm breaking it into multiple lines just for readability. The computer won't care if we put it all on one line, but it's a little bit easier for us to read on multiple lines. So I'll do the same thing here. I will add background, dash color, colon. I'll add a space this time. Again, it doesn't care if I add it or not, but I like to add it just so that I can read it easier. And I'll say a background color here. I'm going to switch these. I'm going to say white, semicolon. That's the end of that command, so to speak. I'll press enter, and then I'll write color, colon, space, indigo, semicolon. So I'm writing them on separate lines just so I can read them. Isn't that a little bit more readable? Broken up into multiple lines instead of one long, hard to read line. So this should then change the look of H1 in my body block. Let's see, I've saved my work. Remember to always save your work. I'm going to go back to the browser and reload. And look at that, I've got a background color of white and text color of indigo and it's only targeting heading 1. Nothing else changed. This is CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. We can control various aspects of the design. CSS is the presentation layer after all. It's the second pillar of web design. The first pillar is HTML, the second is CSS, and we'll see soon JavaScript is the third.